Have you or anyone you know ever been the professional networker? Well, they're doing it all wrong. And today we're going to fix that for you with our guest, Brendan Elliott. And you got to stay till the end because at the end, Brendan's going to give you gold. How to take the one-on-one meetings that you know you're going to schedule and make them be absolute gold for you and the person you're sitting with. So stay with us till that point. Hey, welcome back to Blunt Force Business. I'm Brian LaFauci. And I'm Patrick Marino. And today we are joined by Brendan Elliott. Brendan, thanks for being with us, buddy. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you here. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about you before we jump into the topic? All right, great. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Brendan Elliott. I'm the CEO of Cornerstone Financial Group in Plymouth, Massachusetts. I realized 16 years ago when I got into the financial services industry that uh, it wasn't just going to be about what I knew, but who I knew. And so uh, I realized how important networking was going to be to the success of my you know, my future success. And so uh, after exploring a couple of the, the various networking opportunities that were out there, um, I, I realized that, that it could just be better. And so uh, I switched off and, and started my own platform for networking. And uh, it's been great. It's been 10 years since we started that. We're up to uh, over 30 different franchises, over 400 members in our organization. But uh, I think some of the key characteristics, which we'll talk about later, uh, is is really what differentiates the effectiveness of, of what Networking Group USA and, and being a professional that networks um, brings to the table. Awesome. Well, we're psyched to have you here. You know, we jump right in with our blunt force facts for every podcast. So we have three blunt force facts for our listeners today that uh, we'll expand upon with your breadth of knowledge and expertise. So blunt force fact for our listeners today is presence isn't progress. What's the substance you're bringing, right? What's the value add? Um, you can be there, you can shake the hands, you can kiss the babies, right? But if you're not really bringing a value, then, then, um, you're, you're quickly going to get labeled as a taker, right? And like you said, everybody knows those people, right? And when you're leading with um, what's in it for me first, um, you just showing up in that consistency is, is not the value that I'm looking for in a, in a partner. Awesome. And then blunt force fact number two for today, which you kind of hinted at at the end there, is that networking is a two-way street. Yeah, I, I, um, I think that's the most important. Right. Um, if I'm in there and, and the first person is, hey, nice to meet you. Let me tell you what what you can do for me. Um, I'm I'm quickly turning the, the mute button on. Right. Uh, when it's, hey, I'd like to get to know you so that that I can find out how I can be the best resource for you. Now I'm buying coffee, lunch or maybe even dinner. Awesome. Awesome. And then blunt force fact number three we're going to talk about today is collect relationships, not business cards. Why don't you clarify what we mean there by relationships so our listeners don't take this down the wrong path with uh, what we're trying to collect. Ah, there you go. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think the old school way was you carried around that business card binder, right? And uh, the, the bigger your binder, the, the bigger your business or, or whatever uh, you thought it was, was adding size to. But at the end of the day, it was one of those things where uh, if you can, keep your, you can keep your business card, I want to get to know you. Right. Um, I, I use when people give me business cards, I say, thanks. Now I can pick the teeth, uh, pick the food out of my teeth tomorrow for tomorrow's lunch. It's yeah. really, 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 really harsh. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I send them away crying. So, yeah. so I, I mean, I know that we, you know, we we've already done. This is our second podcast about networking. Um, and a, a, a lot of it comes from my experience because we've really got two people who are heavily involved in that working space and I'm not. And my experience was just a bad one. I had two bad experiences. Um, but my more recent one was when I first started my business, one of the first pieces of advice I got was, Hey, you got to get to a networking group, right? And introduce yourself and sort of start getting out there. And I just had a really, I didn't have like a terrible experience, but it, it just, it was a circle jerk, mm. right? It was a circle jerk. And we've talked about this before where you had the mortgage guy, you had the realtor, you had the construction, the home construction guy. And um, there was a couple other people, you know, like a lawyer who dealt with real estate and they're all freaking referring each other business. And like, here I am a business to business business, right? Mm. Well, I'm working with other business owners and it just wasn't worthwhile to me. Um, but then as I got more involved, you get involved in the chamber. And again, you just sort of see these same faces, right? And you see them at every single event and you don't even know what they do. Yeah, You don't know what they do. You yeah. just know that you had a one, one-on-one with them at one point, right? And, and, and they just don't miss an opportunity to have a cocktail and, and have their picture on social media or have their picture in the business group photo, the chamber photo right, right there. And so we all know that guy and we all know that guy's not 
not really getting anywhere. And can't wait to give you his business card. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, was thinking, I got one guy's business card, I'm not kidding you, um, over 20 times. Get out of before here. Before I said, buddy, I know who you are. And the right, fact right. that you don't remember that you've done this 20 times. Yeah, that's the problem. Tells me which category yeah. you fall in. Right, that's the problem. You know. I I think the networking for me, just to and and our listeners as well, one of I think it'd be great to kind of talk some of the ways people struggle in this world. Because yeah. like our blunt force fact number one says, you know, it's presence is a piece of it, but it's not what really makes it work. And there's so many opportunities and you want to get out there. I struggle with balance. Mm. So how how do you manage the balance of that? Of like Trying to balance out, I'm a big calendar and scheduling. Love it. We talk about it all the time. How do you balance out getting out in front of enough people, mm -hmm. but then also building the relationship, determining like how do you how do you kick the girlfriend to the curb? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I would say um, networking on purpose, right, is is probably the most important thing. When you're when I go into a networking um, environment or a networking situation, or I've blocked off time to network, I have to block off time in my calendar because networking and prospecting is the number one. Um, leading factor to to any level of success that I've ever had, right? So if I, um, but it's it's the chicken of the egg, right? So you network like crazy until you're so busy because of the networking activity, but then you become so busy that you forget to network. So I call it the hamster wheel of death, right? You're on there and you're just spinning all the time. It's 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 like a rotary instead of a highway. Um, and so for me, it's it's when I'm when I have networking in my calendar, it's done on purpose and with a purpose. Um, when, when I think about this first one, uh, presence is in progress, right? I'm never going to a networking event or um, getting myself into a networking situation so that I can just check the box. I'm going there with a very specific purpose. And I know you guys with these blunt force facts, I love it. You're shouting the headlines and you're, you're filling in the story. When I'm in a networking situation, I'm very clear. I shout the headlines of what the expectations are for this meeting whether it's a closed networking environment or an open networking environment or a one-on-one. -on -one. Can you talk about those? You're going to reference those? You've sure. said it a couple of times. Yeah. You know, while well, we've been just shooting the shit before we started recording. Yeah, I've just been and shaking played, my head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, right, kid, I'm yeah. like the kid in the classroom. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a double end around. I know what he's, I know what the announcer yeah. just said. He did a double end around. Of course he did. I saw it. You see it? You didn't know that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Monday morning Yeah, yeah. Close and open. Close and open networking, right? So a closed networking is like a, a BNI, an NGU, um, a Rotary, right? One of those. Um, you're there. It's structured. Um, it's it's open to the public, but it's closed in the in the members that are part of the group. Right? So you're seeing so, the same faces every time. Is that how you would? Yeah, describe I would say that more of um, it's more of a membership where you're going like in a in some of the the morning structured closed networking groups. You're going in there to your point. There's one person in every seat, right? You're there. It's structured. It's very here's the agenda. This is what we're doing. Um, we're going to go around. Everybody's going to talk about themselves, and then we're going to build relationships from there. That's closed networking, right? And then you have open networking, which is and I'm a big fan of both. For the record, um, the second one is is like a chamber event. Right or some of these night events. We have a night event tonight for in, uh, for Networking Group USA uh, in Lakeville, and it's open to the public. Now our closed members will be there, of course, but it's literally open to the public where you can just walk in and just start a relate, start a, a conversation with people, right? And so it's um, it's not as structured, right? And it's open to the public. So when you say open networking, which to be honest with you, the closed networking, although sometimes is more intimidating because you're going into a very dialed in laser focused type of networking, mm -hmm. right? On purpose. The open networking is more easier, is, is easier to um, expose yourself to because it's really just socializing. It's just like going to a Christmas party, right? Right. Now, if you're an introvert, that might scare the shit out of you. You might go, I'll, I'll get behind a closed door with 15 people, but you throw me in a room with 50 people I don't know, I'm going to shit my pants, right? So if you think that you're networking, and this is one of the most common, if I had to put my finger on it, one of the most common mistakes that new entrepreneurs make is they think a, the closed networking environment and the open networking setting should be addressed the same. It's not. 
You you have to have completely different strategies. You have to have completely different. When you mindsets say address the same, are you talking about from the standpoint of I'm the business owner? I'm gonna go to it. Mm-hmm. I have to go to not not in how they maybe lay out in their function, mm-hmm. but how you mentally approach what you're gonna do when you enter the environment. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Go and on and I think because when you go into that open, and we can start with the open networking if you want, because you're going in there, and and there's just natural human anxiety, right, of going into a large room of people where there's already relationships relationships and you may be an outsider coming in, it doesn't matter how much of an extrovert you are. Um, that's still an intimidating situation. So that guy with the drink in his hands, whether he's going there for the free drinks, which is a whole nother conversation, but when they're going there, it's very easy to have a conversation, uh, or to fall victim to just socializing, right? Well, if that's the case, if I have time to just socialize and have a bunch of drinks and, and have a good time, I don't want to do it with 50 strangers, right? I don't have a lot of time Roger on my that. calendar. I've yeah. got a three-year-old, yeah. a one-year-old, and a beautiful wife. Mm-hmm. I am If I have an extra two to three hours on a Thursday night or a Friday night, I'm not trying to go hang out with a bunch of, of strangers that eventually isn't going to lead to business, right? So um, I had a, a mentor of mine years ago that I kept talking about my networking activity. And my ne- I kept bringing it up in all these, these checkpoint conversations and, and meetings. And he goes, how many referrals... How much business have you got from those? You've been talking about that for six months. Every week you bring it up. How how much business have you got from it? No, you don't understand. I'm building relationships. No, it takes time. He goes, great. Is that you, by the way? Did you just do that? Ah, (laughs) You know, Um, but at the end of the day, right, I sit here and I go, uh, he, 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 and this is a man that I respect, uh, top five. Yep. Right. And he goes, Brennan, I love you. You're not wrong. Relationships take time to build. But until you get business from that, just realize that that's a social hour. That's not a business hour. Yeah. So when you learn to transition that or when you snap that in your head that we are going to go from personal or social to business, then you can start bringing it up on these weekly calls. And I was like, motherfucker. Well, there's a couple of things you mentioned I think were really, really important. One and two things we talk about frequently. One is the, the closing part, which is we want to be results oriented, right? Even if we're creating long-term relationships, mm-hmm. If we're in our business building mind frame, then we want to be creating business building relationships that have a goal, mm. right? They have an actual purpose. And we want to make sure that we know the purpose ahead of time because that will help us determine how often we talk to people, which right. which events we go to, how, how much of our time we spend mm. at the events. Because if there's a long-term relationship, we need to make sure that that's with the person who is going to give us some sure. serious... If we're not getting business right now, yeah. there better be an end of the rainbow with yeah. that person right and we should know that that should that should be a, uh, that should be known ahead of time because we've either with the initial uh conversation we figured out mm. this is going to be a person who if i have a long-term relationship with it's going to lead me to the pot sure. at the end of the rainbow but the other thing uh you said which is really important and they work together is you mentioned the word strangers and one of our overriding blunt force facts is you shouldn't be talking to strangers and the problem, and, and this is, you have to learn it, right? You have mm-hmm. to figure it out. It's only, It only comes from experience. You probably have to go to a couple of events before you figure out which are the events that have the people in it that we mm-hmm. need to talk to. Right. But you need to make sure that the event is not for whether it's a closed networking group where you're sitting on the table and you're talking to each other, or it's the open networking, whichever one it is, you have to know that you're potential customers are in that room. right? And some of it's going to be experimentation where you just don't know. But once you get used to it, you have to figure out, okay, I know my customers aren't going to be in that room. Mm. So that's the social hour. Now I'm just wasting my time. Or I know I'm going to identify these events versus just going to every event. I'm going to identify the ones where I know my potential customer is going to be in there, whether it's an income thing, whether it's I'm a business to business person, so it has to be business owners, Mm -hmm. right? It has to be a certain type of business owner, right? So I've done that work ahead of time. So I'm being intentional about what I do. So I'm being intentional about the fact that there needs to be a result. And I'm being intentional about the types of events because I've already done the work and I know that my potential customer is going to be there. I couldn't agree with you more. I, if I could take a little bit of a different spin on it, of course. right? Because obviously you're a business to business guy, um, and and my business is a little bit different. But I think um, one of the biggest switches that um, maybe happened through self assessment and just trying to figure out why I'm not having as much success as I would like in in networking, specifically in those open networking group, uh, open networking events. Um, 
I think the mistake is, is that every, let's say there's a hundred people in that room. You go to a chamber event, which by the way, I love, I'm, I'm on the board of directors for the chamber, uh, cranberry chamber of, of commerce. So I'm a big supporter of the Sounds cute. Ch- it is. The cranberry chamber. You know, hey, Thanksgiving's <laughs> our most popular time <laughs> of year. So, uh, we love bogs. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, so Brian, Brian was there with that shirt. I was, I was wearing that shirt. Pretty sure I saw you harvesting <laughs> I was uh, a couple months ago. No, but the, uh, the biggest thing was, I think a lot of people go in there with the mindset of, of how am I going to get business out of today? Like, like they're walking in to fish, right. Yeah. And trying to walk out with some, some dinner. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, when I went in there, almost like I was interviewing everybody I met to figure out whether or not, not whether, sorry, let me start, let me rephrase that. Not whether or not I could get business out of you. But when I went in there and started thinking, let me see if you're the type of person that I want to pull offline and have an, a one-on-one conversation to see if we can build a networking relationship, a referral-based partnership. Is this the guy, right, that I met at an open event, so it was casual, but said, you know what? We had a really good conversation and your business lines up with my business or I can see how we can we can be a resource for each other. So let's take that offline versus going in there, seeing a sea of people and going, who am I going to sell, right? Boy, is that exhausting. Because right. then every single conversation you're having is your sales pitch, your elevator pitch, your yeah, yeah. how can I grab this guy or oh, yeah. did I screw that up? I come home with 9 million business cards and then you start the cold calling sales cycle. Right. But when I get to go in and go, you know, that Brian guy, I had a real good conversation with him. Right. I, d- d- don't worry about his last name. He's not related. Right. So at the end of the day, I can have I can have a conversation and say, hey, man, I, I really enjoyed that conversation we had the other night at the chamber meeting. Um, let me take you out for coffee. Yeah, I got to I got to piggyback that because I and I don't know if this is a phase of life thing or what, but I've definitely gotten to the point and I feel kind of almost blessed to be. To say this and do it, but I've definitely gotten to the point where, if like, if I don't really like you, mm. it could be the best. You could be the best referral source for me in the world. Mm. I don't really care. I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want it. And, um, and I'm because I look at it. I look at it from. You made a, an interesting point to circle back to it when you said, uh, when you said, if I go out and spend these three hours, um, I, you know, similar. We all we have kids, right? We we mm. all. Have, you know, we have families, we're all very blessed in that fa- fashion, and that's where we want our time to be. Right. Um, so when we're not there, it's like, what am I doing right now? Mm-hmm. And is this va- is this worth what I'm not doing, right? right? So to balance that, I kind of, th- I kind of take a, a little bit different approach than you said of the fact that we spend a lot of time at work and with the people that we work with. Mm-hmm. So putting them in the bucket of, I want to collect friendships here. Because at the end of the day, I want to turn those people that I'm choosing to go to lunch with, have coffee with, into things that those same people should end up, hey, I got an extra ticket to the game. You want to come? Right. I would call you. Right. If I wouldn't call you, sorry, because I know I don't call you much for the game. If I wouldn't call you. <laughs> just say golf. Just say golf. I, I wouldn't go golf. I call him. He knows I'm kidding. I call him everything. I'm like, go to this. He always says no. It breaks my heart. So if I, uh, but if I wouldn't call you for that, which I know is going to come up, right? I'm going to have the extra. T- and if you, then I almost put you in the bucket of, eh. And maybe maybe you would tell me because th- you know you've you've made your living at being very successful at this, far more successful. I may do it a lot, and you put us in the same conversation. We're not. I I do it, and I value it. I'm clearly not as strategic and operational as as you are about mm-hmm. this, because I don't want the relationships of if I don't see us enjoying the time. Like if I wouldn't call you over to my house and we we're having a party, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I really want to do it, and if it's worth it for me to do it, because a lot of my time in life is going to be spent with those people. I think the key to that point is what you how, how you uh, preface that statement, which is you're in a fortunate position at this point in your life, right? If you're a brand new entrepreneur mm-hmm. and you're trying to fill that calendar and yep. you have that chicken of the egg complex, right? Business comes. I, I I don't have time to network, or or I'm networking too much. You're trying to find anybody that's got a pulse that's willing to, to nod their head at you and give you the time, right? And so I think that might be where um, you're, you're in the, um, the AP class. But I still have financial point. goals. So to the counterpoint of what you're saying, if, if I have or any of our listeners have a financial goal, 
then we still have a gap we're trying to fill. Sure. Right? So I, by no means would I put myself in a, in a bucket where I would say every single financial goal I have is met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right? Yeah. So, so am I, you know, and I know it's a hypothetical question, but, you know, one of the things I ask myself is am I sacrificing because of my, you know, right. am I losing a little bit? Is there a is there a way to bucket that better, um, and and say okay, put it in the bucket for what it is, and instead of looking at everything like hey, we got to be best friends, if there's a mutually better because that does, I mean, there's a lot of situations that doesn't work at all. You look mm. at like politics, things like that. You gotta, you know, you gotta be with people you hate a lot of times yeah. to make things work. And um, how do you deal with? relationships that you feel like, all right, I don't maybe, you don't have to identify them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love yeah, this. Not by name. I don't, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't, or We're address, or address. But yeah, I don't love. Trying to cut my Christmas card. I, I, don't, half. <laughs> I don't love this guy or girl. Yeah. But there's so much value here. I got to find a way to make it work. Like, how do you manage that? Uh, well, first, let me, let me touch on one thing. Um, I think it's interesting when people say, um, um, you know, not all of our financial needs are met, right? Otherwise, but we're entrepreneurs. Our, I don't know if our ever. financial needs are ever going to be Never. met. Never. So, but once right? you get once you yeah. get to a certain point, though, where money is no longer a problem, right? Um, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, you know I've got plenty of money, right? But but now my success is just the scoreboard, and I love running up the score, right? And so it doesn't matter. It's not not necessarily about the money, right? But of course it is. But at the same time, it's what do you, where do you find that driver to keep working, to keep doing these networking meetings and these networking mm -hmm. events when you finally reach that plateau where you're not plateau, but that peak where where you're good. Um, well, now I got to run up the score. You know, it's just a scoreboard. It's, it's just, a competitive. It's a it's a, your own competitive way to do. Yeah. That, There's right? also a complacency thing where if you don't, you mentioned the point. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that during the actual video or if you mentioned that before the video, where if people leave the group, people panic, right? You're, if you're part of a, of, of a, of a structured networking oh, yeah. group yeah, and yeah. you lose four people and you're like, oh my God, like, what are we going to do? I love that. You look at it as an opportunity, but I think that the reason why I had to bring that up is because if you get to the point, and I'm not saying Brian's at this point, but if you get to, I know I've gotten to this point professionally where I'm like, you know what? I'm so freaking damn busy. Like I'm not selling myself anymore. Mm. But that is a huge mistake, right? Right. So I'm thinking networking is probably like that too. Like where if you're networking, you get to your point now. I've got a, I've got a book of business. My calendar is full, and I stop networking. Mm. Now you've opened your up to this, especially this nowadays. problem of people dropping out of your network, mm -hmm. or just like anything, you're not flexing that muscle. You're not out there. You're practicing no, networking, so you, you're not going to be as good at it anymore. You're not only will your skill set, just like anything, right, um, will it start to slip, but also um, you're no longer the top of mind awareness, right? It's like in professional sports. It's, it's not making it. It's staying, right? And so because the next year there's a new draft class. Right. And there's another there's another person in your industry that just got hired that's hungry and hasn't done the 10 to 15 years. And they're willing to put in the extra hours in the gym. They're willing to put in the extra hours at eight o'clock at night on a Thursday to make sure they meet every person in that room. And you go in there and be like, ah, been there, done that. Right. And so it's that old, like, what have you done for me lately? Right. But you have to be holding yourself accountable for it. And that's one of those things where it's easy to lose motivation. I'm sure we'll talk about this in some other topics, but it's easy to lose motivation. I don't need motivation anymore. I need discipline. Right. You know, so to to your point, I'm sorry, I, I kind of took us off on a tangent there, but it's your show, how, how, how do your I, show, Brandon? Hey, all right, right, so we're we're over here in the blunt zone. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, blunt, yeah. you're not in the blunt zone. Yet, no, I so think, um, so if, and actually, it's funny that you that you that you say that that we're in the blunt zone, uh, blunt force zone. Is is how do I manage the relationships of the people where I'm like, oh, it's valuable, but man, I don't I don't want to go to go to the game with this guy, right? I get to a certain point where I'm I'm going to shout the headline on that and be blunt and open and honest with them. Right, and just say, hey, listen, I'm not sure we're um, capitalizing on this relationship the best way we could professionally. Yeah. Right. And and to quote, you know, Michael Jordan there uh, when he, when they were asking why he wasn't getting involved in social um, social um, topics, he goes, uh, Republicans buy sneakers too. You know, so I don't care who you vote for or, or you know who you're married to or any of that stuff. There's if there's business to be done, I'll build the relationship. I might not have you over for Christmas, right? But right. if it's a relationship where I go, I'm, I've um, I've insulated, I'm a big fan of the word insulation, mm -hmm. right? Especially in business. I've insulated myself from having to go <sighs> before meeting someone. 
I'm not going to have that relationship. Okay. I like that. Because I'd rather, I'd yep. rather go yep. create three new relationships where I don't have to go, right? We all, no matter what's going on at home, right? You might be in a disagreement when, when you're younger yep. with your parents or with your siblings or with your spouse or whatever. You had a long day and you know on the other side of that door is a shit show. You put that key in the door and you go, and you walk in, that's no way to come home to your castle. Right. And so I look at it the same way with my networking partners or my, my business partners is if that relationship is so deteriorated that I have to take a deep breath before I even text you. Right. There's a signal, red flag. Yeah. Flares yeah that's great. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, one of the you things, we, I don't know if this came up the last time we did networking, but there's this concept of fast firing. And I think you brought it up where it's just this idea where, you know, you don't want to spend a lot of time. And you, if you figure out, if you can suss it out, especially if you're good at this, you've been doing this a lot. Mm-hmm. You can figure out within, a, you know, five minutes, like, yeah, we're we're we are not doing business, and I don't like this guy. Mm-hmm. Like, don't freaking go. Even if it's a, pot- even if you see like, oh, this guy's really really successful, he's got all these connections. But if you figure out this is just not going to work, yeah, move on. Right? It's like kick him out. Right? Move on. You got to. I think you brought up was it fast firing? Is that your? Hey, I don't think I, is that like I don't a, think I used that term. You know what I do? Or fast a, firing is like just something that's out there. But I think it, I think it works in this environment because right. if, you, if your network is super important, or as you said, maybe it's a time in your career where it's like you're in the grind and you freaking need to network like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like you just need to freaking like you can't just spend your time in a relationship that's not bearing fruit and the person that you don't get along with, right? And there's no potential future, right? Rather than like I know he's freaking like he's at all the events, he's giving me a drink, like. And I got, you know, I can freaking talk to this guy, but you have to cut those relationships out and replace them with relationships that are going to be good. Sometimes what's better than good news is bad news fast. Right. So I love. That's like the higher fire principle. Right? Uh, yeah. Like, right. Yeah, like you take your time to. The sooner honor, we get to know this is good not, for us. Or not great. good. Right. The, the, as right. soon as the, the faster we can find out that this is going to work better. Great. The faster we find out that this is not going to work even better. Right. 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 It's Absolutely. just, what are we doing? And right. so also when it comes to networking, I think, I think a big, uh, and you guys brought it up earlier and I was, I kept repeating it in my head so I wouldn't forget it, but I have this philosophy. Um, there's now for now, now for next and now for later. Right. So everything I do, every action that I do in business falls into one of those three categories. Right. So I have that low hanging fruit that now for now, that's that, um, you eat what you hunt, right. Or you, mm-hmm. you, you know, you, you, you eat what you kill kind of thing. Um, that's that short term. I can do this right now and it's going to have a direct impact on me right now. And then I have that now for next, which is I have to do things now, but it's not going to happen until next week. Right. And then I have other things that are, oh, this is like a six month cultivation here. Right. So, so most of us, right. In school with the teacher said, Hey, there's going to be a big test at the end of the semester. You're not going home and studying. Right? Especially if it's nice out. The teacher's like, it's worth 80% of your grade. You're still not got, yeah, when is that test though? It's three months from now, right? She said, hey, there's a big test that counts for well, 80% of your grade. Some of us roll out of bed a couple of days later and call the teacher and be like, I missed that. Can I, I make I'm that sorry, up? sorry, what was that? <laughs> uh, do as I say, not as I do, right? No, but if then you have that, um, hey, there's a test that's going to be 80% of your grade and it's next week, right? You're clearing your schedule, right? Right. So the activity in networking falls into this Um and it's a trap where they're going to these open networking events going now for now. Open networking is a now for next, now for later, you know? Um, what's a great, I love it. I what's love important that. though uh, is the That's going to be part. on the worksheet. Absolutely is going to be on the worksheet. Yeah. Now, now, our later, for our now or later are those candies though. For our, yeah, that's all I could think about. <laughs> for, our listeners to, for our listeners to put their, their networking prospects in those buckets like, yeah. and start to identify that and kind of plan out and be more strategic with um, how we're going to approach the people. What's they, interesting about it is if you really start to analyze it and you really start to catalog it and pay attention to it, yeah. right? what happens is, is you're now for later, yeah. right? becomes now for next and then eventually becomes now for now. Yeah. But here's the most important part to it. If you don't do the now part, the later will never come. Roger. You feel me? Right. Yep. So if, if I'm a hunter, right? Both in business and in, in you know, mm-hmm. my personal life, right? So if you think of that caveman, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt because I gotta feed my family. Right. Well that's that now for now stuff. But it's very it it's good because it satisfies your appetite now. But boy wouldn't it be nice to be able to spend the spring planting these seeds, you know, plowing the fields, planting the seeds, paying a little bit of attention. It doesn't take a lot once you get the, a lot of work up front in the now, but then eventually knowing that later 
when I do come home and I may not have as much of a, a kill, quote unquote, but on the way back to the home or back to the cave, I can pluck some produce from that farm that I've been building over the last six months. Well, now our plates are full. It's just not all the same food. But if you didn't take the time now to plant those seeds, to sow those fields, mm -hmm. you're just going, sorry, honey, all I got is what walked by me, you know, or I missed. So yeah. I guess we're not eating tonight. Right. Right. You, that, that's not successful business. I find myself like I'm on the prairie now and like I'm in the fields and the farm and I don't know. I'm, out, I'm in the, I'm in the blunt zone right now. You're in the prairie. I'm in the fucking blunt You're in the zone. Prairie. So maybe we should start. Maybe we should do right now is start to think. Okay, well, especially you two, right? Who are the professional? Not the you network like professionals. Yeah. So this is the key, right? So here we are. We're trying not to be professional networkers. We want to learn how to be how to network like a professional. Let's talk about some key takeaways that these people who are watching this video they've waited all the way to the end here, right? Now we want to give them some key takeaways. Like what just. Throw one out. Give me one key takeaway here, something that they can take and they can use either in their planning for their next opportunity or they can use tomorrow night when they go to the chamber event. Your podcast, you want me to jump in? Oh, I want you to more than jump in. Okay. I wanna, right. I'd like to sit here and, how about, and how about, absorb. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I think people make also, um, and by the way, this is through trial and error and tribulation myself, right? This isn't me sitting back reflecting on what of watching other people. This is these are the mistakes that I've made. Well, I mean, I know I'm the I'm the perfect one in this in this relationship. I'm the one who hasn't made any mistakes. Brian's making mistakes all the time. All but the it's time. good though that we have a relationship because I can, learn, you can from, learn from, I can from learn my from mistakes. His mistakes. So you're right. the woman in the group. <laughs> got it. <man. laughs> I got you. So, <laughs> no, never wrong. Not there's right? anything wrong with never that. Wrong. Never no, wrong. No, no, no. Yeah. I can't wait till I get all these uh, Twitter um, backlashes from that comment. But That's anyway, okay. so so I think, so let's talk about, right, you go in, you go to an open networking event. Um, somebody goes, oh, you should come to my BNI. and I. You should come to my NGU, right? Mm -hmm. So you go, you check that out. And then you go there and they think, okay, because I'm in this group, I'm going to get referrals. <laughs> Listen, that is a business meeting. Right. When you go to whether it's an opened or a closed meeting, that yep. is a business meeting. And if you're doing business, it should be on purpose. I know we addressed that already. So you're using that open networking group or networking opportunity to cultivate closed relationships, right? For for the way that we're we're cataloging or, or categorizing those two. Then what ends up happening is I go into my networking group USA group and we've got 30 people on the call. We got 30 people on our Zoom or in person, however, you know, the, the meeting set up. And I've seen and I've heard and I've shook everybody's hand. I've met everybody. And then they think because I did a 60 second commercial that I'm just going to get referrals. Huh. That's business. You're making business connections, but you're not building business relationships. That has to be taken offline and you have to do one-on-ones. Now, here's the problem. Most people will do a one-on-one -on -one wrong, in my opinion, because what ends up happening is... I'm taking time out of my day to go and sit down with you for coffee. Now you need something out of this meeting and I need something out of this meeting. It's a pulling dynamic. So you're having this tug of war with a smile on your face. Yeah. Right. And so imagine if both done properly, how, um, how cohesive it would be or how efficient it would be if it was making, if both people understood the making it a two way street. So when I go in, I really struggled with one-on-ones because I, I knew it was part of, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. So I went there and I sat there and I, and I didn't listen. I waited to speak and there's nothing more detrimental to your growth, not only professional, but you know, um, per, not just professionally, but also personally, when you're talking to somebody and you can tell that they're not listening, they're waiting to speak. Now imagine building a business relationship with somebody who's just, everything you're saying is hitting them in the forehead and falling to the floor because they're just waiting for their turn. You right? know what it is? Brenda? How often have you done this during this conversation? I, I've been very- Listen to I, learn, not I, listen I, I, to I've the been response. very attentive, but right. there've been moments where I've, I've, you've said something and like you said, it's triggered a, a response in my mind and- and I'm like, all right, don't forget that. Don't lose it. And it's tough because then what you say after that, I'm trying to dump multitask, mm -hmm. um, which is what I just did when you said that. Because one of the things that we use as our blunt force fact a lot is listening is leadership and leadership is listening. Yeah. But it's to that point. And we listen had, to learn and not listen yeah, to respond. And listen to learn. And we've had this conversation yeah. offline all the time where we've kind of made promises to each other, mm -hmm. right? When we're canoodling. And I'm like, Patrick, I'm going to. That's Who gets a, the bigger Shannon. pillow. I do. That's a, <laughs> Shannon, that's a Shannon word, by the way, canoodle. Canoodle. Uh, 
where I'm, like, that. I'm no. like, we need to make the conscious effort to, to when each of us is talking to stop trying to formulate our own response. Mm. It's, I mean, and we've now have been doing this together for so long that it's a little, it's fluid in yeah, nature. Of course. But at times you still find yourself like, Oh, he said this thing. I, it, yeah. What? But well, that's like having but, a little notepad next to your bed. So when you wake up, right. And I was, I was almost going to well, say, "Hey, I, can I have that pen?" Yeah, you absolutely. Right, because I wanted to. We I, have a pen I and a notepad that right? you're going to yeah. leave with today. And no, a hat. look at that. And and a hat. Hey, yep. No, and so, so and a now, bikini speedo. So but, now, what ends up whatever. happening is, is when you're in this one-on-one meeting, right? And the two of you are not only pulling because you both want something out of the meeting, yes. but you're also waiting to speak instead of listening. That is not the fundamentals for a successful relationship. Again, both personally. Or professionally, right? And so for me, and again, because of how much I've done this over my career, I flipped the script entirely, right? And so you sit down, you do your one-on-one and you do the, the and it's not bullshit. It's, it's, it's small talk, right? You're of just, course. You gotta, hey, I mean, how, how no are the kids? Oh, I'm so there. glad we got yeah. to do this. I, all right, well, let's get into it. Right. And then you kind of look at each other for a second, like who's going to go first? Right. And then it's sometimes, and I remember saying, I'm not doing one-on-ones anymore. Cause I did a one-on-one with somebody. It was an hour and a half and I got the last five minutes. Right. And not because I was letting the other person have it. They sucked all the oxygen out of the room. Right. And I ended up walking out. Like I had to sell something. Like I had to buy something from her. Right. When I'm doing a one-on-one, first of all, I'm not trying to turn you into a client. That is not my that would be a different conversation. Mm-hmm. When I'm networking, my goal is to sit in here and identify whether or not I'm going to be a, able to be a good resource for you right. and whether or not you can be a good resource for me. So what I do is I shout the headlines and shout out the expectations in the very beginning of that meeting. I say, listen, here's, here's the point of why we're here. Okay. After we've done the small talk, right? Here's the reason why, uh, why we're here, right? The expectations. I want to learn everything about you and your business. Right. And it's my hope that by the end of the day, by the end of this coffee or this time that we spend together, that you have done a good enough job. And I've asked the proper questions to make sure that I know exactly who you are, what you do, who your ideal client is. And I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a declaration that if we do this right, I'll have three to five new people out of my book that I can give you today. Right now, it's also my hope that by the end of today, I'll do the same for you to give you clear expectations of who I am, what I do and who I specialize in working with so that you can go home, really brainstorm and do the same for me and provide me with three to five good quality people. Right now, that's what our job is here today. And then I start talking or I I, I'm sorry. And then I stop talking. It is possible. Um, I let them go. And I say, so how'd you get into business? And then I let them talk. And I just, you know, I'm not interrogating them. I'm like, in, in, in an uncomfortable environment, what's the thing we know best? Ourselves, right? So when we get nervous, we default to, let me tell you me. Let me tell you all about me. And then next thing you know, you're rambling. You're getting nothing done. And an hour's gone by. And you go, oh, I'm so sorry. How about you go now? And you're like, dude, I got a meeting. I can't, I can't be doing that. So when I'm asking you, and I'm, I'm, taking, the, um, I'm taking the awkwardness out of it, and I'm saying, how'd you get into business? Why'd you get into that? How long have you been doing it? Who do you work with? Why is that person? Let me ask you, how can I be the best resource for you? How can I be the best referral source for you? Who's your ideal client? How'd you get that client, right? And I'm genuinely engaged because all I've done is ask a question and I have no criteria. I have no expectations. So I'm not trying, waiting to speak. I genuinely get to just hear, oh, that's cool. That's great. And then people will dump truck because what they're they're the experts in their field, right? Or they feel like they're the experts in their field. So it's easy. It doesn't have to be scripted. So then what happens is they dump truck everything. Now they have nothing in their brain to hold on to. And then they go, okay, that's enough about me. How about you? And then I get to say, you know what? Thanks so much. I can definitely think of three or four people right off the top of my head, but let me go back, analyze my book and figure out who I can really send you that fit those categories. Now, if you want to know about me and all those same questions I just asked you, here's me. Right now, it's no longer a tug of war. It's now been we're both putting into the pot. Right. And we've both given ourselves an opportunity, not just socially, but also psychologically to listen instead of waiting to speak. Yeah. I love how you frame it. You know, that's a very unique thing. I know a lot of people aren't doing that because I've networked and and had lunch with so many people that have never utilized that strategy at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, definitely a strategy I'm going to adopt. Well, I also think that the the other thing he brought up, we've talked about this word a lot and we've been talking about a lot is just this word value. Mm -hmm. And then 
like we need to enter the relationship or the conversation with not what value can I extract? What value do I bring? Absolutely. Right. And so now it's a relationship. If I'm bringing you value Mm -hmm. right now, maybe it's not a two way street. Maybe all the value is on my end, Mm -hmm. but I know that a lot of relationships, I'm always hesitant to, uh, to enter into any relationship with somebody where I know I'm not going to be able to provide the value. And I'm always just like, look ahead of time, like, look, it'd be great. If you could give me some business, it's fantastic. But with the types of businesses I work with, mm-hmm. they're not going to need. And that actually happens with Brian because Brian's working on kind of like with higher level, bigger businesses frequently, especially with like the business brokerage side or whatever it is. And I'm working with these really, really small people. So mm-hmm. I'm always just thinking like, how can I provide yeah. value to Brian yeah, yeah, yeah. with the types of people? And, I, and I'm thinking through, thinking we do some things at the home show, whatever it is. Like I'm always trying to figure out like, yeah, what, what can I, how can I help this person out? Yeah, you know what I mean, what can I do? And I think that if you have that mind frame going into the conversation, and I think it's, it's important too to identify that and call it out, right? So two yeah. two two points. Um, you know, one is if I go in there, like when I work with real estate, you know, anybody in real estate, I, I love working with real estate people. Yeah. They're super brilliant. They're hard workers, right? And and um, they're they're able to to weather the storm, if you will, right? Um, very resilient. So I love working with real estate people. But the problem is, every single person that that real estate professional works with could use me. Everybody needs financial advice, right? Um, not every financial client is buying or selling a home right now. So I look at them and I go, you, you know, you, you might work with 20 people in a month. That's 20 possible opportunities for me. I might come across one or two a quarter right. that I can send to you. But I right. just sent, I just sent right. three referrals to my real estate right. agent yesterday because yeah. it just happened to come up. Right. So, so I call that out and I go, so knowing this is going to feel lopsided, Right. But also if I send you two, three clients in a quarter and your commission is an average of 10 to 15 grand in mine, you might send me 10 to 15 people, but mine on average is a thousand or whatever the number is. Right. Although the quantity might feel lopsided, the actual value there is the exchange. So I call that out. So it doesn't feel like I'm just going to take, take, take and not give it back. Yeah. I identify it so that, you know, I'm not being selfish. here. Yeah. Right? That's I think great. That's important. And, and uh, yeah, the identification piece is is fantastic. I, I think this was a great conversation. It was. And we this should was... try and uh, we should try and wrap it. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, but because we can we, keep going on and on. Yeah, there's I a whole this, bunch of things I want to talk I about. I think which this we is didn't. great. I, I think I mean, we give people a lot of uh, a lot of good takeaways. You absolutely. learn from somebody who's clearly an expert at networking. Yeah. Right. Clearly brought a lot to the table, and I think that people are going to be able to leave this. The As last, better networkers. The last bogey, I know we're wrapping up here. The last bogey, though, is if I go into a new environment or a new relationship, yep. and the first thing out of your mouth is what I need to buy from you, yep. I'm done. Yeah, of course. Right? I'm yeah. done. I'm, and, and I'll stop it. Right, and I'm I'm at that point where I'm I'm able to. I know. love it. I yeah. couldn't grit. I yeah. had to grit through it yeah. before. But when I sit down with somebody and they go, "Hey, so here's my product," and here, oh, you're oh you. You're trying to get me as a client. Yeah. How about we talk about how we can add value to each other? And eventually I'll go, wow, you know, by the way, one of those five people I'm going to send you is me. Right. But when you go in and you're trying to hard sell me as right. an individual yeah. sales opportunity, yep. done. I'm so done. Well, I'm here's all set. To, 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 um, quick point to that. We'll wrap it up. But <laughs> you I just saw my eyes. I'm just like, yeah, all right. Now. All right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to tell you the point offline because it's more of a funny story. Okay. All right. Sounds Three good. blunt force facts for our listeners that we went through today. Blunt force fact number one, presence isn't progress. I think we did an awesome job of talking through that. Blunt force fact number two, it's a two-way street, just like you said. Talked a lot about that. Give too. more than you get. Provide right? your value. What's yeah. my value first? Be a giver. And then what's your value? And blunt force fact number three, collect relationships, not toothpicks or business cards, whatever you want to refer to them as. Clear expectations. Awesome. That's the easiest way to do it. Awesome. Great stuff. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was awesome. Good stuff. I'm Brian LaFauci. Patrick Marino. Until next time. Thank you.